So welcome, everybody, to the inaugural Diversity and Inclusion Awards. I will just skip the furniture. Um, these are generously sponsored by Qatar Airways. So we all know, because it's come up many times, that we have a lot more to do to bring true diversity into all levels of our organizations. We cannot shy away from the challenges, not just to get more women into senior roles, but to ensure that the industry is a place where everybody is welcome and their talents are able to shine. We know at IATA from our work with Corn Ferry on a survey that we did earlier this year called Soaring Through the Glass Ceiling, that all underrepresented groups in our industry are asking to see stronger role models that they can aspire to. They want to see that organizations are really investing in their employees and opening their doors and their minds to true diversity and inclusion. Now, these awards in themselves are not going to fix the historical issues that we have in our industry, but they will start to shine a light on what our role models and pioneers are doing to change the demographic, to inspire future generations to join this great industry, but also to enable employees, women and men, to unleash their talents across all sectors of the industry and at all levels of leadership. By showcasing some of the wonderful work that's being done, we provide a platform to others to demonstrate how diversity and inclusion is not just the right thing to do, but it's the only thing to do if we want to ensure a sustainable future. Without further ado, I'd like to invite our esteemed panel of judges and generous sponsors from Qatar and our DG to join me on the stage. So you have to bear with our sponsors because we realize the awards are actually very heavy, so it's like a little workout for them as they bring them up to the stage. Thank you. So our judges, Angela Gittings, these faces will be very familiar to you. So Angela Gittings, the Director General of the Airports Council International. Gloria Guevara, who spoke very powerfully earlier, the CEO and President of the World Travel and Tourism Council. And Karen Walker, the Editor-in-Chief of Air Transport World. I'd like to ask Angela Gittings to kick off the proceedings by announcing the winner of our first award, the Inspirational Role Model. Thank you, Jane. Uh, first of all, I'd like to congratulate IATA on not only having this award, uh, but for the excellent list of candidates and nominees uh, that were chosen. Uh, we were able to choose from a very talented and respectable group of women, and it was quite inspiring. Uh, so the first award is for the inspirational role model, uh, and the winner is Christine Umiers Widener. Uh, this award is for uh, a woman in a senior position within the industry who has had a significant impact on the aviation agenda through her strong contribution to business delivery, as well as her ongoing support of the gender averse diversity, uh, to the support of the agenda of gender diversity. Christine started as a young engineer working on the Concorde for Air France. Uh, she has shown herself to be keen to mentor young apprentices, particularly females. Her credo is, girls will not believe what they cannot see. And she has lived that. She started a Fly She campaign to get girls interested, not just interested in aviation, but to believe that they could be in aviation. She was the only female CEO of a UK airline, and I remember being here last year and looking at the photo of the <coughs> board of IATA, and she was the only female on that board. She is truly an inspiration and certainly a true winner of the Inspirational Role Model Award, please. <laughs> to 
your hands. <laughs> Oof. That's very heavy. Um, I must offer first huge thanks for Ayata and uh, for establishing the Diversity and Inclusion Awards uh, this year and to Qatar Airways uh, for sponsoring them. It puts a much needed uh, spotlight onto an issue that definitely can completely transform our industry as it moves into the future. I'm very honored to be the first woman to receive this inaugural Inspiration Role Model Award and I'd like to congratulate all my fellow winners, but also all the nominees and all the women in this room because we are all inspiring role models. We have made uh, so many uh, improvements already in this industry, but uh, when I look around in this room, I think there is much more to be done, and I think we can do that together. We need more women in leadership, but we are getting there too slowly, and uh, through this award, I will be able to help to ensure the presence of at least one more woman in such a role, and I will explain to you how, and don't worry, we are not going to take over, <laughs> at least not yet. <laughs> Transformation can only benefit uh, future decision making. It brings new skills and competencies and different perspectives, and we all know that diverse organizations are more successful than others. Our overall level of ambition should be to achieve a real gender balance, and I mean 50-50, but by keeping always the fundamental rule of choosing the best person for the job. And IATA should be the voice of the industry. I really believe that regardless of whatever country or cultural background we come from, it all starts with our children. Young girls need to be encouraged to have the same dreams and ambitions as young boys. There should never be two modes of education, one for girls, and another one for boys, uh, where girls are typecasted at an early age. Two plus two equals four, whether you are a girl or a boy, and gaining an aeronautical engineering degree or qualifying as a pilot should automatically be seen as achievable by all regardless of gender, and this attitude needs to be instilled at an early age. Last year, Flybe commissioned an independent research across 2,000 UK families with children aged between 6 and 17, it revealed a huge gender bias in the roles to which children currently aspire. When thinking about future careers, girls are half as likely as boys to want to become an aviation engineer and four times less likely than boys to want to be a pilot. On the other hand, girls are almost three times more likely than boys to pursue a career as cabin crew when they grow up. We all know with all our famous, famous customers, and we love them so much, that, that are bringing on board more than they should. Maybe we should be putting more rugby players, men, in crews to leave the carry-ons. <laughs> to encourage and inspire more young girls to consider aviation as a viable option, there needs to be more emphasis on steering towards science, technology, engineering, mathematics, and they're never too early to start motivating ambition. And in addition, we need to also to change the perception of our industry. And it should be seen as more diverse, so more exciting, more modern, and more fun, because we need to be more attractive employers. And I hope to use my career to experience and network to open doors and continue to push the gender ceiling as high as possible. I'm not that tall, but I have strong arms. <laughs> so girls cannot be what they cannot see and they need to see more inspirational role models. And we launched Flyshe also to include more young girls through apprenticeship and new recruitment. By including a large percentage of the population that is currently not enough represented, we can address the future skills shortages facing aviation. Finally, the big question is what I'm going to do with my $25,000 and I did allude it uh, earlier, I obviously want to use it to support diversity and inclusion within our industry. 
So my intention is to sponsor a placement at Cranfield University for one deserving woman to achieve an MSc diploma in air transport, and then for her to one day stand here before you to deliver a speech herself. I'm very excited to get started. An open call for a search to find the best candidate is being officially launched today, and I cannot wait to review the application. I'm sure that many of you also have been lucky enough throughout their careers to meet fantastic CEOs, managers, and entrepreneurs. So I will also be offering to the winner an ongoing mentorship. I would challenge each of you in the room to do the same for a woman in our industry. No matter what your role you have, you have more experience and expertise as someone still coming up through the industry, so share it. And please, wherever you go, with whoever, whoever you speak to, tell the youth that an engineer is a woman, a pilot is a woman, a CEO is a woman. Together, we can lead our industry into a fully diverse and inclusive future for the success of all. And I thank you again for this award, and I promise to strive to continue to merit it as my career continues. Thank you. So, Christine, if you want to go and have a, an, your official photograph taken. So, as, as Christine is, is having her official photograph taken, uh, which will be used, as she said, she's going to be launching a fund um, for a, a woman to study at Cranfield. We'll use these photographs to help her kind of spread that message. Now, Gloria, over to you. If you would like to join us on the stage to announce the winner of the High Flyer Award. Thank you. Thank you. I think someone left their glasses here. Thank you, thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you, Alexandre, for the invitation. This is an honor for me and WTTC to join this distinguished panel and participate in this important initiative. I'm delighted to present the High Flyer Award. Aviation is a very exciting industry. And as we heard, we have to support doubling the growth. So we need to make sure that we attract new talent and young talent. So this High Flyer Award recognizes young leaders who are driving the industry forward. And we had a long list of candidates, and it was very challenging, I have to say. But it's very important to recognize who is encouraging new generations in, in our industry through different initiatives. Involvement, for instance, voluntary organizations, attracting girls to aviation, recruitment programs, and the most important is to inspire future generations to work in this amazing industry. The future looks bright and looks great. It was very complicated to select a winner, I have to say, because we had great candidates. Our winner set up the African Aviation Professional Association in 2014, which aims exactly to attract the future generations to our industry. She focused on the future of work, which is a top priority for all of us. I know from WTTC that's one of our priorities for IAT as well and for this amazing industry. Also helps to diversify the profile, because our passengers have a very diversified profile, so it's very important that the industry also is very diversified, sustainable, and inclusive. Attracting, as I say, new generations. It's helping us today to bridge that gap and to bring youth to aviation, bringing mentors to communities, especially to children, that they are in the most unprivileged um, groups. The YAPA Act for Change program helped kids to understand the different roles that we have in aviation. Because we might know about the pilots, we might know flight, about the flight attendants, but what about the rest of the different roles? Personally, for me, I'm very touched because of the energy and the determination of this winner and how she has been inspiring future generations so excited and so committed. 
So ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, let me jo please join me in congratulating Fadi Matu, or Fadi, as the winner for Clyer High Flyer Award. This is heavy. Very inspirational. Thank you for, thank you for the work you do, huh? Thank Very you. inspirational. Thank you. Very Very heavy. Thank you. I'll leave you now. Say some words. I will want to keep you on stage with me. Huh? I will want to keep you on stage with me. Very ah, good. Okay, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I had to prepare a speech, but writing down, I, will, I might have missed my words. So I want to share exactly the feeling that I have from the heart. I will start by thanking Ayata for initiating diversity and, um, <laughs> excuse me, <laughs> for this initiative of the diversity and inclusive um, award, simply because I am a woman who joined aviation nine years ago. I studied in, I was born in the city and I studied in the rural area just because school learning English was in that area. And I remember my mom telling me, if you don't speak English in the future, you won't have a place. And knowing about aviation nine years ago, I was very concerned with the fact that being at school, I never had an opportunity to know about what aviation was and the importance that aviation has in the development of all economies. So I was privileged to join the startup of my national airline, and I found out that something needed to be done because we all know aviation in Africa is still in progress. And I said, we need to start from the roots. I couldn't fight those before me. I couldn't change those with me. But by inspiring the next generation and creating a platform of exchange between inspiring people like Gloria and all of you professionals here, and having the support of all the organizations in Africa, AFRA, AFCAC, IADA, supporting me each time I had this idea of creating a platform to exchange between the prof to create exchange between the professionals and the youth, they always reached out and said, "Your idea is not stupid." So, thank you very much for all those he in, who, in respective conferences, have in one way or the other inspired me by making me understand that I was on the right track. I got special mentor for a very inspiring woman, Funke from Ayata who always ran out each time I said I was doing a youth event in a school. I cannot, I cannot forget the very first youth aviation forum that I held in 2016. I was very afraid because it was the 50th anniversary of Cameroon and we had the youth week and I said I wanted to make a strike. So I reached out to Ayara and I said, please, I'm organizing the first youth aviation forum for Africa. Even though I cannot pay for your transport, I need you to make a speech. And this was amazing because Ayata rushed out and I had Rafael Kuchi joining me with Funke, Fabrice Sairi, and Sidi. Just imagine the excitement I had for my whole government to see the little girl, as they called me, bring in these professionals. And that changed the life of many youths in Africa. Africa is 54 African states. And the Young African Aviation professional association builds the bridges between these 54 states. And getting this award today is not for Cameroon. It's a sign that the Africans from the 54 states, with its diversity, are concerned and will be included in the evolution of aviation. We are all aware of the fact that Africa is the current and the future market for all aviation who, uh, stakeholders who are here. You all come and see us, but we are ready and prepared to support you, to include you in our development, because we need the exchange of technology. We know you are all interested in seeing aviation prosper, but we too are part of the world. And all of us are ready in our respective activities, and we reach out to you through our different um, forums and uh, projects like the YAPA Act for Change, 
or the APA community centers we are about to put to give the opportunity to these underprivileged kids or those who are passionate about aviation and who don't have the possibility of joining the industry because with passion, we can, mount, we can cross mountains. I want to give a special thank to Qatar Airways for giving us the opportunity to have the 25,000 US dollars. You just can't imagine the number of school bags or the number of computers or the number of screens that we're gonna have to enable these kids dream by having the flight simulation and seeing that they can become pilots or having an overview of what an airport can offer or taking these kids going around the airport when they can't even afford every day to get a proper breakfast or lunch. Yet, the passion of being educated, the passion through technology of seeing what is happening elsewhere and having them involved is the best thing we will offer them through our community center with the money we're gonna receive. With this said, if I have to talk, it will be for the whole day. <laughs> I have a whole continent waiting for me. I'm gonna take this hour to the five regions of Africa because we are working for a united Africa, Northern Africa, Southern Africa, Eastern Africa, Western Africa, and Central Africa from where I come. Thank all of you. You are amazing. Okay. So uh, I think that any of you that have spoken to Fatty uh, will know how passionate she is about what she does and what a big difference this really makes. Um, so, um, you know, if you haven't spoken to her already, please do take the time because that passionate passion is infectious, I think, for, for all of us in what we do. So just while she's having those final photos taken, Karen, I'd like to invite you to talk about the diversity and inclusion team of the year. Thank you, Jane. Um, thank you, Mr. Dejuniak, Mr. Albaca. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I'm absolutely delighted to present the award for diversity and inclusion. Uh, this award is being presented to an IATA member airline team that demonstrated it has directly and positively impacted diversity and inclusion within its business and its work has resulted in measurable changes in perception. This award was another real challenge for the judges because the achievements and efforts by all of the finalists were so impressive. These companies serve, uh, serve as diversity and inclusion standard bearers, not just for the air transport industry, but for any industry, workplace, or organization. They fully recognize that setting a workplace environment that welcomes and embraces people of different backgrounds and cultures leads to a business becoming more creative and more innovative. This cannot be a one-time project for any airline. It must be a continuous effort. And we saw that reflected in the shortlisted airlines, all of whom we congratulate. So as I say, it was a tough call. But let me share a few points about the winner that took the judges' attention. This airline is one of those companies that has diversity and inclusion in its DNA. And yet in 2013, the airline embarked on a journey to further step up its inclusion efforts. This began with a focus on gender and accelerating the advancement of women. That extended into a broader area of focus, such as ethnicity and LGBT inclusion. The company set metrics so that they could track progress. But most of all, what we saw was an incredible passion across the company, and quite frankly, great joy in making Air New Zealand a place where Air New Zealanders can be themselves and thrive. I'm absolutely thrilled to announce that the inaugural Diversity and Inclusion Award goes to Air New Zealand. Please welcome. <laughs> of course, needs no introduction, but Air New Zealand CEO Christopher Luxon. Good. Congratulations. Enga mana, enga reo, enga rauranga tera ma, tena koto, tena koto, tena koto katoa. 
Kia ora, good afternoon, and special greetings from all of us uh, in New Zealand and at Air New Zealand. I just want to say what a great honour it is to be able to receive this Diversity and Inclusion Award on behalf of 12,500 really diverse Air New Zealanders. I want to say thank you to our Diversity and Inclusion team who have been great agitators for change as we've tried to build and accelerate this agenda uh, over the last six years. When we started six years ago, what was our goal? Our goal was very simply to make sure that we could build an Air New Zealand that was representative of the great country that we come from, Aotearoa New Zealand, and all of the diversity that sits within it. And so that's the program and the progress that we've been on over the last six years. We've done it not because we think it's the right thing to do, but it actually kind of is. We've done it because there's a very compelling business case behind why diversity inclusion should be at the heart of what a company's strategy is all about. When you look at the research, companies that have a top quartile ethnic diversity uh, leadership group uh, have about a 33% more likely chance of delivering a higher than average market share. When you look at top quartile gender companies, they deliver up to 38% more than the average market share across the piece. So it's not just the right thing to do, it is actually a really compelling business case. And I would argue when you look at Air New Zealand's result through the lens of customer, commercial or culture, we think the diversity and inclusion is at the heart of what we've done, has been a big driver and a big reason for that success. But let me put a challenge to everyone in this room, because there's a big elephant in this room, which is that if we're really honest with ourselves and we say it as it is, uh, the diversity uh, track record from IATA and from all of us in the global aviation industry is pretty abysmal. And yet if we want to come back in 12 months' time and have another embarrassing sort of lip service conversation about it all, uh, we actually need to do some real action between now and when we regroup again in Amsterdam in 12 months' time. And I think there are some really practical actions that each and every one of us as airline CEOs or executive members of teams or senior leadership within our airlines can do when we get back to our homes. And the first is that actually we start with women. And why do we do that? Because women represent 50% of the world's diversity. And if we can't get it right for women, there's no chance that we'll be able to build greater and more diverse organisations with respect to sexual orientation, age, disability, ethnicity. And so for us, I think uh, there are some things that we can practically do in the next 12 months together. And the first and foremost is to set some targets with some real teeth. Uh, this is about overcoming the unconscious bias that sits in our recruitment and our advancement of women through our organisations. It's not about quotas, but it is about having some serious targets around that. I think the second thing we can do is actually build out a really strong women's network within our organisation so that the voice of women is really captured within our organisations and is played back to us as the senior leaders so we know how to improve our companies and to make it a better place where they can be themselves and actually thrive. There's some real big programs around development and management that we can do together. There's certainly a lot that we can do around pay. Uh, we have a 0% pay equity gap. Women are paid the same as men for doing the same job. It's a basic construct, but we kind of need to start there and actually fix that up and get that done right. Um, and I'd say the last thing we can do, certainly as CEOs and as men in the aviation industry, is probably make a panel pledge to not go speak at places where actually our panels that we're on are not gender diverse. There isn't a woman sitting on that panel. Uh, and I think that's something that I've personally made a commitment with several years ago. I know many others in the room have done so as well. But it's important that actually women are seen and heard uh, in our industry and in our forum. So in closing, let me say to all the men in the room, uh, this is not a women's issue. This is actually an issue that has huge economic and social importance to our, to our economy and to our society. If women can't succeed in our corporate life and our boardrooms, they won't succeed elsewhere uh, in society. And I'd say that for too long, women have actually led the charge advocating and driving hard-won achievements uh, around uh, equ uh, gender equality. And I think it's time for powerful, decent men who have the influence to actually step up alongside women, not doing it for them, but stepping up alongside and beside them to help advance the case of gender equality. It's a pretty disruptive strategy, but I think men taking it to men is a pretty good way uh, to build the case of more diversity. So thank you again for the award. It means a lot for us. It encourages us to keep going, and uh, I look forward to seeing more progress in the next 12 months. Thanks so much. Thank you, Christopher. If you just want to join for a photo. So I, I think we must thank Qatar Airways for being bold enough to take the action to sponsor these awards. You know, you can really see the difference that it's making on an individual level and on an organizational level too. And, and as you sit here looking at the winners and having heard those stories, I think Christopher was very clear in some of the actions that he suggested you can actually go tomorrow and talk to your leadership team and say, what can we do differently? I think 
You know, at the heart of our industry is connection, and that is connecting people and connecting the diversity of our world. And that means that we need to actually be proactive. But diversity is nothing if we don't think about inclusion too. And inclusion is a personal choice every moment of every single day. And so as you're going on your journeys home, I really ask you to think about what can I do to be more diverse and inclusive in my organization? Um, because I really want to, I hope that once you start to take action, we can start to see changes. Because next year, these were an amazing bunch of people, and I think that they've set the benchmark for all of us to aspire to. But next year, I want to see you here. I want to see your applications for these awards, because we will be doing these awards next year too. And I'm pleased to announce that we'll be opening nominations for those in February 2020, so please do look out for them. In the meantime, I would like to ask you to congratulate our winners one final time for the tremendous work they have done, and also to thank our sponsors who have generously supported this initiative. So many, many thanks and congratulations. Don't go, Christopher. <laughs>